So if you have played Valorant, then you surely know Reina's blinding orb ability. I tried to recreate one using Unity's particle system and shader graphs. It is not identical, but if you want to know how to do this, just follow the steps in this video. Firstly, in Photoshop, create a 1000 by 1000 pixels canvas and add a new layer. Then with the ellipse tool, draw an ellipse, right click and select stroke path. Duplicate the layer and modify its shape like this. Remove the transparent background and export as a PNG. Now in Unity, create a new material, set its shader to particle standard only. Set the rendering mode to fade and check two sided. Set the albedo to Unity's default particle texture and increase the intensity to about 4. Then create an empty game object and reset its transform. Then move it a little bit upward. Under it, create a new particle system and disable looping. Set the delay to 0.25 and the speed to 0 because it doesn't need to move. Set the size to 2 and give it a dark pink color. Enable color over lifetime and make it a fade in fade out. Also enable size over lifetime, double click to create a new point and make these waves. Change the materials albedo to the ellipse texture you created. Now to create this outer shell, download Material Maker which is a free software. In its workspace, press spacebar and search Voronoi. Connect the scale X to the albedo. Set scale Y to 16 and increase the intensity to about 1.5. Then export under Unity 3D. Back to Unity, create a new universal only shader graph. Set render phase to both and enable alpha clipping. Then create two color properties, one for the interior and another for the exterior of the shell. Make sure they are both in HDR mode with a white color. Then create a texture 2D property and connect it to a sample texture 2D node. Set its default texture to the Voronoi texture you created. Then connect it to a power node and create a new float property to control its power. Give it a default value of 1. Now add the two colors to the graph and multiply each one of them with the output of the power node. For now, connect one to the base color and the power node to the alpha. And you can see it's preview down here with a single color for now. Then create a new float property and call it a road. Set its default value to about 0.3 and connect it to the alpha clip threshold. Now create an is front face node and connect it to the predicate of a branch node, which is an if statement. So if it's a front face, we want to see the front color and if it is a back face, we want to see the back color. Then connect its output to the base color of the graph. Now to make it move, create a vector 2 property and call it speed. Then multiply it to a time node. Then connect it to a tiling and offset node and then to the UV of the sample texture node. Set the speed value to 1 on the X axis. And now it moves. Then create a material out of this shader graph. And for its front color, select a dark pink color. Give it the same color for the back color, but just increase its intensity. Then set the clip or erode value to about 0.3. Now create a new particle system and set its duration to 1 with no looping. Set its delay to 0.25 with a speed of 0. Then set the rate over time to 0 with a burst count of 1 and disable shape. Change its render mode to mesh and select a sphere, then assign to it the material from the shader graph, then change its render alignment to local, and this is what it looks like for now. Now to make it more realistic, duplicate the ellipse material and replace it with the default texture. Then create a new particle system, increase its duration to 6, set its start lifetime to 0.5 with a speed of 1, and give it the same color as the ellipse. Give it a random size between 0.05 and 0.1. Increase its rate over time to 20. Change its shape to sphere with a radius of about 0.6. Enable velocity over lifetime and give it an orbital value of 2 on the Z axis. Then assign the recent material. And this is what it gives. Lastly, duplicate the ellipse particle system and name it Flare Dark. Change its delay to 0 with a lifetime of 0.35. Set its size to 3 and give it a black color. Then disable size over lifetime and assign to it Unity's default particle material. And this is the final result. 